do I do when I get LiDAR data? I first look at it in various ways. And the tool I usually use is called uh, Last Info. So let's look for Last Info. Last Info. Info like information. Last Info. Here it is. Last Info is actually a, a fully open source tool, meaning you don't need to license Last Tools to be able to use Last Info. And uh, same as before, we're browsing, but this time we browse to Brazil. And let's go to 2013 first. And I told you before that the data is in the it's in the raw folder. Click, click. And here's all the data files. Let's just load them in all. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. And now you maybe see why it's useful to only have the bounding boxes. Click, click. Click, click. And I think I have them all. So, and I can now select them, either by clicking on them. And what happens if I select a different one? I see the, I see the contents of whichever one I select here, the header contents. But let's, let's now just look at the data. As I said, I haven't seen it myself. So I'll pick some tile. And now, before you start saying view, click selected file only because otherwise you will load all of them so I'm viewing selected file only and you see our usual command line and I press start and interesting I get a lot of brown points in some fa interesting order oh now I get yellow points and now I get the green points um, let's look at some of the other visualizations color by elevation. Okay, that looks nice. But if I press now plus, 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 I instantly see some outliers. Now let's go back to the classification. Color by classification. And well, the low outliers were classified as I noise. So I'm, I'm hovering over the point. But the high elevation ones, these ones, were not. Now, if you compute some kind of maximum height and you use all the points, then you will find very tall trees there. But they are obviously not trees. They are obviously very, very small baby dragons that were right here and right here, much higher than the rest of the points. So we need to get rid of those before we start making uh, DSMs, CHMs, or forest metrics. Okay, let's look at, by pressing N, we get all the noise points. And we go straight ahead and do a small LiDAR processing pipeline. The smallest that I can think of. We will make a ground model for a forested area. Let's just get started with a tool called last ground and I'll explain why we're doing this and what's happening as we go last ground is the tool we are using now so just try to find it in the bin folder last tool spin last ground double click clicking. and again you get this boring looking gray so we browse and try to find the file and now and and that's why the file structure is different than here. I'll put it there so it's conveniently near when you when you when you browse. Brazil we do later. Now we go to Poland. That's a very small example we do right now. So let's take a quick trip to Europe. Click click. And in the Poland folder you see only one small file, the LAZ file here. And as before you get this green or the blue box. Some people say it's green, some people say it's blue. It's almost the same. Every tool has the viewer built in. Here's a viewer. So we can just press view to have a quick look. And I always suggest, when you get line of data, the first thing you want to do is do a visual check. Maybe it's complete nonsense. Maybe the projection is geographic and it's a lot longer than this. You need to do something else first. Um, or 
you instantly see that something is wrong because the points are looking funny. So this is a small forest that was LiDAR scanned a couple of years ago in Poland. And, yeah, it looks like a forest. Uh, by pressing C, like color, we can go through different colors. And here you see a very typical coloring now. It's, uh, and just a quick quality check, I'm looking at it from above, and I press X twice, X, X. Then you directly get a cross section, and I can, uh, I can pan it so I look at it from the side, and now I can walk through the forest. Now I can, using the arrow key, I can walk through the forest and just sort of have a look. And I can change the coloring, and I can nicely see the forest. I see the big trees, and I see the small trees, that's the plantation forest in Poland. And uh, if I go through different coloring modes with C, again, that's color by height, color by height, color by return. Now what's that? That coloring here. That coloring is actually color by flight line. What's color by flight line mean? Well, when you do a LiDAR scan, one, one time the plane flies across, doesn't scan the entire area. Because the plane only scans a few hundred meters on the ground. So eventually it has to turn around and fly back and scan the next area, and the next area, and the next area. So the LiDAR scan sort of flies back and forth to cover the area. And points that are from different strips usually have a different flight line ID. And what you see here, the red points are from one flight line, and the blue points are from the other flight line. Uh, the other colorings is color by intensity, um, uh, so that's a problem in my view actually, we should clamp the intensity, uh, I'll show you that in a second, uh, um, color by uh, return, uh, okay, at least the returns are looking correct, so I'm, uh, I'm looking at this now from above, I only see red and orange, that's good, that means nobody cut off the first returns. F, L, first and last. What else do I want to check? I want to check the flight lines, color by flight lines. Ah, good, I have flight line information. So at least I can make a flight line alignment check. I see the different flight lines. Zero, um, one, two, three, four. I think these are, might be multiple flight lines now in this view right here. But I can see the different flight lines are still there. This was color by flight line. And A gives me all points again. What's last info? Why did I start this tool? Well, with last info, you can print an info, a report about what's in the raw file. And uh, let's do that real quick. Often people send me questions through my mailing list and say, oh, I have this problem here and I don't know what's happening. And then I usually have to write back. Well, okay, you need to describe it in more detail. Can you send me a last info report? It's a text report of what's in the file. And we, I, I only do it for one tile right now. So where, where will I put this info report? I'll put it in a different directory for quality check-in directory, which I created it for you, so. And I see already a directory I created for you. You can actually create directories also with the create button, it's not there yet. So I go into that directory, and I say, I press the button, use this one. Okay, so the output report will go into that directory. And uh, there are other output options, I usually, this is the one I prefer, I get, I use the existing file name, underscore info.txt, that tells me that's the info report. That's under output option. So I always like to make an, a histogram of intensities. So this is under histogram, intensities, and uh, maybe a bin size, I don't want 
the bin for every little intensity, maybe I pick um, 32. So this gives me, you know, from 0 to 31 is one bin, from 31 to 32 to 63 is the next bin. This will just count how many intensities there are. The Z is often useful, so you can see where the outliers are just based on the Z value already, every 10 meters. And again, you have to press add. If you do something wrong, you know, like, I, I just did something wrong. I, I used the capital Z. Capital Z means raw integers as stored inside the file. I want to delete this again. I did that wrong. I do that by double clicking. Click, click. I want to use this Z. This is the actual Z in meter. Well, another interesting thing is to see the, maybe the point source. The point source is telling you which flight line, which point is from. And that usually use a bin size of one because every point has a different flight line ID. And I want to compute the point density. Okay. And again, I don't see my run button because it has disappeared. I need to close this, press run, and I see my very, very long command line now. So it's, it's one reason it's so long is because the file name is so long. And the description will be in the folder called Brazil 2013 raw quality, if everything goes well. It's already there, I'm not sure it's complete yet. So I have a look at it, and here's my, my last info report. You see the file header, and then you see uh, the minimum and maximum is reported for every point. And you here you have these X, Y, Z capital that I just talked about. That's actually stored in the file. Okay. I will now use a transform to change the intensities. First, I scale it. I scale it by a factor of uh, 0.25. I divide it by 4 to get it down. Now, the biggest one, 1024, that I'm interested in, but that's not enough, and now I need to clamp, clamp intensity. So if it's higher than 255, I just send it to 255, period. So in the end, every intensity will be between 0 and 255, and then I can nicely look at it, because uh, then I can just map it to a gray value, and gray values are usually between 0 and 255. So how does that look if I view it now? Start. And of course nothing changes for the classification. So if I now go and say color by intensity, I can actually see something. I now have a bit of a, it's like a panchromatic image. And if I want to make an image, like an intensity image, for this live data set, I would probably do something similar to make it look nice.